Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is Games Leaving the Collection for the month of December. Another month has come and gone, another batch of games has to go, and for this month we have a bunch of games. We have like four or five games leaving my collection for my unplayed games, which we'll talk more about that as well. I have four or five games leaving my collection for my permanent collection. I say permanent because nothing's truly safe. And then a bunch of games as well that I reviewed and I'm ready to move on from as well. A batch of games to go through, as usual, timestamps and links to everything down below. But before we even do that, let's start with the usual disclaimers. And the biggest one is always that I play a lot of games, both because I review games and just because I've always had the personality that I like trying the new things. It means that on average, I play a little less, a little more than one game a day. I play roughly a new game every single day. That's 360 five games a year. My collection is only around 300 games, which means these games can't stick around. And the reason I tell you that is because good games leave. Good games that I reviewed leave. Good games for my permanent collection leave. Games have to move on. I try to keep the ones that I think are the combination of the best games for me and the ones that are most likely to hit the table and the ones that hit genres that don't, you know, that I don't have as many games in. Basic point is, just because the game is in this video doesn't mean I don't like it. I may have reviewed it positively. In fact, some of these I definitely, my first one they talk about is a game that I definitely was very positive about and still am. Past that, I'll also say over on Patreon, if you are a Patreon member, some of these games, like maybe two to three games every video, do go away to various Patreon members. If you are a member at any level, you are eligible for some games, and if you're a member at the $50 level or above, you are almost guaranteed to get a free game every single month. As usual, I do say, please don't join Patreon specifically to get free stuff. Please join it because you get value from the content, you bet you appreciate what I do, all of those things. And then additionally, sure, you'll also get free games. Past that, Let's go ahead and start this one off, and then I'll say that, I mentioned already, I mentioned that four or five games are from the uh, unplayed games, which I have, at any given point, I have like 80 or so unplayed games lying around, and I hope to do another full end of year purge. When we get to the end of December, maybe I'll do like a full end of year 2023 purge. Uh, I don't know, we'll figure out, maybe we'll do like another Meg walking around the room trying to figure out what she can convince me to let go. We'll see, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. This isn't a full end of year purge, but four or five of these are unplayed games that I am reluctantly letting go of. But with that, let's go ahead and start this one off, starting off with our first pick, which is Caesar's Empire. I gave this one a four out of five several months ago, maybe five, six months ago, I don't know exactly how long it's been, but I gave this one a four out of five, and I really like the game. I think it's excellent. I think it's accessible. I think it's got a very good rule set. It's a very simple rule set. It's a very quick playing game, well, an hour or so, but it gives you a lot of strategic depth relative to the depth of the actual rules. I like it a lot. The reason it's leaving, and I said at the time that I'm not sure how long it stays, but the reason it's leaving is ultimately, since reviewing it, I've given it another four or five plays, and around ten plays total by now, which for me is good for what the game is doing, but I feel like I've explored it enough. I think I prefer, and I said this at the time, I compared them, Millie Fiori is a game that's very similar in the feel I get out of it, but Millie Fiori, I think there's more happening in the game, and it's just a drop more fun for me. So from those two, they both had similar spots as far as when and with whom and what player count, what time length I would play those games, and I think Millie Fiori just has a drop more staying power for me. So Caesar's Empire, as much as I do enjoy it, it is time for this one to go away. Then from there, let's go into one of my unplayed games. This is going to be Rome and Roll, and I think I'm officially giving up on playing Rome and Roll. I wanted to play this one. It is a Roll and Write, one of the more complex Roll and Writes. I think Hadrian's Wall kind of stole this game's thunder. This game came out, people were like, wow, there's a lot going on in this Roll and Write game. But then Hadrian's Wall came out, and people were like, wow, there's a lot going on in this Roll and Write game, and generally we consider it to be better. I say generally because averages, there'll be someone who loves Roman Roll that does not like Hadrian's Wall, and vice versa. But in general, Hadrian's Wall is the more well-received game. And I think Roman Roll, I just don't think I, I feel the need to dive into the rule set, the complexity to figure this one out. I've had it for a long time, from PSC games, from I believe David Tershi and Nick Shaw. I've had this one for a long time. I still am open to playing it. Like, whenever I get rid of games that I haven't played, I'm always like, one day, one day at a convention, someone who watched one of my videos will be like, Alex, let's play this game, and I'll be like... I'm busy, I'm going off to a meeting, I'm sorry, next time, I'll try. But it, in all seriousness, it depends on the convention. It depends on the convention. The more playing games conventions, like Dice Tower West, like Level Up Retreat. In fact, by the way, I guess I have time to do a shout out to Level Up Retreat. If you haven't yet checked it out, Level Up Retreat will be uh, February 2nd to February 4th of 2024. I'll throw a link down below. If you want to come check that out, there'll be a lot of us playing games. I'll be there, and a whole bunch of other people will be there. Plus, of course, you know, games will be there. Hot games, prototypes, all the things. Check out Level Up Retreat if you want to. Aside from that, back this over here, Roman Roll. I've had it in my collection for like three years now, four years now, and I haven't played it. I think it's time to acknowledge that I'm not prioritizing it, which is an acknowledgement I should have for a lot more games, but one day at a time. One day at a time, we'll try to get rid of what we can and move on from what we can and consistently just keep the best of the best or the most interesting around as long as I can. In one of my more recent reviews, we have a small box one, Western Legends Showdown. I thought this was okay. It was it was fine. It didn't do it for me in a particular way. I gave it a three out of five. It was it was 
a decent game that gives you a lane fighting system. Not really lanes, but you're fighting over three locations by playing cards. I think it's totally fine, I just don't think it's a standout game. And there's a lot of other games in the genre that to me do it a lot better. We also have over here, we have Star Realms. This one's a bit of a cheat because I currently have the Star Realms Nova Collection big box because, you know, who wouldn't want to take a small portable game and make it in giant and harder to navigate? But Star Realms Nova Collection, I should have that in a deluxe video sometime because that's like an all foil version of Star Realms with all these fun things. But I just don't think I need uh, Frontiers, which I actually don't think Frontiers is in the Nova Collection. But the Nova Collection gives you enough stuff that I just don't think I need both. So Star Realms Frontiers, it's a good game. I'm just replacing and updating this with the Nova Collection. Then we have another recent review. This is going to be Perfect Wave. I did not love this one, unfortunately. I like the premise of it. I read the rules. I was excited. I started playing it. I was excited. I played the whole game. I was excited. Excited is a strong term. I was enjoying myself. I was having fun. And then we got to scoring and I was like, no, no, this game just, just punishes you for trying to play the game. And I'm sure, or I hope that I'm alone in that feeling. I don't know. But for me, it really felt the game gave you a lot of ways to try to do things and really made you feel, I felt the tightness of a heavy Euro without the mental satisfaction of a heavy, heavy Euro. And I just don't like that combination. Either give me the tightness in a heavy Euro or let me do a little bit more stuff in a lighter game. This is a lighter game that felt, made me feel like I couldn't do anywhere near as much as I wanted to, which isn't the experience I want from specifically a lighter game. Then over here, let's grab another one that is, uh, this one I don't even know if you call this permanent collection or whatnot. This is one that I played through like almost the whole thing over here. We have Trek 12. Uh, this wasn't even a review copy. This is like one of my own copies, one of my own games that I dove into. And I, I did throw it into a bundle up review because like I'll review things, whether it's a review copy or whether it's something I bought myself, I'll review them either way. But Trek 12 over here from Panasaurus Games, I thought this was... I thought this was a fine game. I enjoyed it. It's a good roll and write. It has unlockable elements in it. So you're unlocking packs and adding new stuff. I won't say what the stuff are. It's not really legacy, but it has just like unlockable content as you go through the experience. I think it's a fun little game of rolling dice, chin the numbers. I think it's satisfying. I enjoyed it. And also I've played it enough times and gone through the content that I'm ready to move on from it. And also it's available on BGA, which means I can also still play it that way. So as much as it is a fun game that I did enjoy, I just think I don't need to keep this relative to my other roll and writes. I think the decision space in this was like, a lot of the fun to me was the unlockable content, and now that I'm done with that part of the game, I think I'm fine moving on from Track 12. We have Starfighters Rapid Fire. This was an okay game. It was not amazing by any means, but I did have fun with it. This is a sort of real time, not really full real time, but this real time dice allocation going on. Primarily a head to head game between you and another player as you try to move your ship around the board. You roll dice, you assign them to how you navigate, you assign them to how you shoot, and then ultimately trying to launch missiles through space, shoot them with your lasers, and figure out the best person to roll. There's a lot of little tips and tricks as far as how to optimize against the other player that do make this a little bit rewarding, but it still feels very much like a one-trick pony as far as, hey, roll dice, assign them, shoot the other person out of space. I think that the game system gave me enough things that I've enjoyed my time with it, but in no way is this a game that I feel the need to add to my collection. To me, this is very firmly a try-before-you-buy kind of conversation. Like, you might love it. This is the kind of thing, like, I'll happily play it, but I certainly don't need to own it or have it in my collection. We have Jacques Marc, The Winter Market, which this is, like, this was very, like, you know, very cool looking. It's from WizKids. I like the feel, the theme, very fun art style. The whole game is about set collection with just different sets of cards because I think there's like 18 sets of cards and you'll use six different sets in a game. It doesn't have to be six. You can mix it up, but around six different sets in a game. So there's a lot of ways you can combine those sets and you're trying to gather these cards and score them as efficiently as possible with each type of card set doing a different thing in the way it scores. So very highly variable, but ultimately just a game but trying to gather sets of cards. Ultimately, I thought the game was a little lighter than what I'm personally looking for. It was a fun game. I enjoyed it. It. I like the variability of it, but just the decision space was a little lighter considering what I'm looking. I, I can say out of those 18 sets of cards, maybe four of them, five of them really let you like more interesting decisions and the rest were like, hey, here's different ways of gathering points, but not in a way that felt as rewarding as I'd like. So a lighter game, very charming, very fun. If you're looking for a lighter gateway game, then I can recommend it. But for me personally, uh, not one I'd go for quite as much. We have Beyond the Sun over here. This is a game that I've played a lot. I review this one. I don't even know when I review this one, but I, I very strongly like Beyond the Sun. And I, I very, I hesitated a lot before getting rid of this one because I haven't played the expansion. That always, that always messes with my mind. Sometimes a good game just takes an expansion to make it great. The thing is, I think Beyond the Sun is kind of great as it is. My issue with this one is twofold. The first is that 
it is a game that I've played, like, I don't know, 12 times, 15 times this year. Like, I've given it a decent amount of space, and I think the more I've played it, the more I'm like, I kind of see, I've seen what the game has to offer. There are games that I play, like, once every four months, and sometimes those games will last my collection for seven years because it takes a long time to experience them. I played this a lot this year. I got into it, I enjoyed it, I thought it was excellent, and that does mean, though, that I charge through the content a little more quickly, and I kind of feel like I've, I've seen the game. I like it. I think it's great. I, I do. Like, I highly recommend this. Uh, this is a good game. I just, I've played it a lot. And then plus, it's on BGA. It's available on Board Game Arena, which means it gets additional plays over on Board Game Arena. Games that I'm a bit on the fence about, if they have an online implementation, it makes it easier for me to get rid of them because very often I play those games a lot more. The reason I was able to play this 12 times is because I have played this in person as well, but it's easier to not get a bunch of online plays of the game, and so I can see more of the game faster and still experience it when it's gone. So Beyond the Sun, if this wasn't on BGA, I'd still have it. And even with it on BGA, I debate it because some of these expansions don't make their way onto BGA quite as much, but for me, I think, again, part of my problem is I'm constantly trying to say, I just got five new games that I love. I mean, this year we've had we've had a bunch of games that I've loved this year. We have Four Northwood, we have Wayfarers, we have Expeditions, we have DEI, we have Elden Fall, El El Evenfall. We have a bunch of games that I've really, really enjoyed that I, I need to add to, my, not need to, choose to add to my collection. But with everything that comes in, something has to go out. It doesn't have to go out, but I choose to have it go out because otherwise I'm just setting myself up for failure where I will never play the games I love. Honestly, if I was being really cutthroat, I could probably cut out half the games in my collection. I probably should. At some point, in some way, I might just give up and say half the games in my collection are gone because they're great games. But I, I, don't, I don't play them necessarily as much. The only problem is if I did that, I'd probably get half of those back again. So I, I do it one at a time instead of just being completely chaotic and cutthroat. From over there, we have Photograph over here. This is another recent review. I thought this was a charming game as far as the... Well, charming is the wrong word. I, I thought the theme was charming, and I thought the game was very tricky, and it is very tricky. It's almost frustratingly tricky as far as how the game system works. Ultimately, it's set collection, but there's a mechanic as far as how you draft cards, then wind cards in your hand, and then play cards. It's very, very, very... It's very puzzly. It's a very satisfying experience if you can figure it out. For me, I think that the... It felt a little bit too hard to hit that pattern for a lighter game. I mean, I walked into this kind of expecting a, a Colorado, a No Thanks, one of those lighter games that are, are give you strategy, but but that kind of cap out there. This one really felt like you have to completely change the way you approach the game to do well in it. I did like it, but not a game I feel the need to add or hold on to. Let's put it up there instead. Then from there, we're going to have Fury of Dracula. This one is a long time coming. This is a long time coming. I've had this in my collection for five years unplayed. I still hope to play this game someday. I still hope to. I would love to play it. I mean, it's Fury of Dracula. It's a well-loved game. It's a well-rated game. It plays way too long, supposedly, from what I hear. But I'd still love to play this. But at a certain point, I have to acknowledge that I'd rather pull out Beast and play that. I'd rather pull out Main Mind Management and play that. As much as I would like to try Fury of Dracula, I'm just not making it a priority. And if I'm not making it a priority, well, then why not let it go? And that's a decision I've been pushing off for about four years now. So, um, because I've had it for, like, five or six years now, and I haven't played it, so... Again, going back to that convention thing, I I would happily sign up for Fear of Dracula. Like, Roman Rolls, like, okay, if I have time, but I might find other things in the way. I want to play Fear of Dracula. Uh, I'm skeptical that I'd keep it, even if I like it. Like, you know, how long is it, and is it worth it relative to other hidden, role, hidden uh, movement games? But yeah, it has to go. It is unfortunate, it is sad, but hard decisions have to be made. Above and Below is a tricky one, because Above and Below is one that I have technically played before. Uh, this is one where I played it a long, long time ago, and I was first getting into gaming, or I would say roughly, probably when it first came out, whatever year that was, I want to say 2015 maybe, so not first into gaming, but early on in my gaming career, I, I played Above and Below, and I thought it was good. That's kind of where I capped out in this one. I didn't think it was necessarily amazing. I thought it was good. I thought Above and Below did a good job as far as what it was trying to do. I can't really tell you more than that because it's been so long since I played it that honestly, I don't remember anything other than the fact that I played it and was like, I'm okay with it. I was exploring new new genres, new titles, and it's one that I got back because I, it was so long since I played it that I was like, maybe, maybe I should try it again. With playing games like Sleeping Gods, with Now or Never, Near or Far, have I played Near or Far? I don't know. But with playing so many games in those genres, I was like, maybe I should try this one again and see how it holds up for me. And I am tempted by that. I'm tempted by that decision space, but this has been my collection for two to three years, not getting played, cue the usual conversations around. At a certain point, I need to decide which games are going to get priority, and I don't think Above and Below is hitting that, unfortunately. Then we have over here, we have Villomino. Small box game review. I did this along with Photograph and, uh, you know, Western, whatever. I did a bunch of games in a small box game review roundup, and Villomino from 20th Century Games I thought was 
okay. I give it a 2.5 out of 5. I think the game is not the worst, but it in the genre of trick-taking games, this is one that it's not full trick-taking, but it has that kind of mechanic to it. Ultimately, you're trying to play sets of cards for either the, the, the same value or the same color, so it kind of has a slightly similar feeling to Sleeping Queens. It just felt like, it felt like someone tried to gamify Sleeping Queens, which is fine, but ultimately I just don't think that experience worked for me. And then lastly, we have Exoland over here. Exoland, that's a lot of noise making in the game over here. Exoland was actually a preview copy that Devin did on the channel, and I, I was interested and intrigued by it, but then it kind of showed up and I just lost interest almost immediately, which is a hard thing. Like, it's a balancing game, he said it might be good for the kids, so like I got it for that reason, but like, I don't know, it just, uh, may. I don't know. Maybe I should play. I have no clue. I, I, this is purely based on the recommendation. It wasn't really that I was that interested in it. It's just that Devin's like, oh, your kids might like it. So I grabbed it because, you know, planets and balancing and that's a like, fun thing. How long is the rule book? How long is the rule book on this one? Maybe that's a factor. Let's see. The rule book is... Uh, it's two pages. Maybe, maybe I'll read the rules in this one. I might read the rules. If I, if I think it's short enough, maybe. Like, I don't anticipate it sticking around almost regardless. But if if... I might read the rulebook on this one before it goes away, but I do think it's still going away. I just think balancing games, like my kids used to love Riff Raff. It's a pirate game. It's hard to get your hands on. My kids used to love that, but it's just, I don't know. I don't love, I don't love playing those games. I think not balancing games are not as much my go-to genre. And I think, uh, Exoland, I, I kind of went with the recommendation and didn't think that practically through whether it would or wouldn't get played. And that's what we have over here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 games leaving the month for the month, leaving the collection for the month of December. This is not the hardest month that we're going to have, not by a long shot. Our end of year purge may well be. I'll see. I want, to, I want to do an end of year purge. I don't make any guarantees, but I want to do a full end of year purge. Maybe it'll replace the games leaving the collection for January. I don't know. I want a cutthroat purge. I like doing cutthroat purges at the end of the year. Like, you know, let yourself be free. Go through it all and just sit there and say, it is time. Whether I play a bunch of games just to get them off my, like, my playing list and then see how they go. I want to do, I want to do, I'm going to set a goal for myself. Okay, here's the goal. I could either do a meg size stack, which is what we did last time, or I could just set a number. Let's go for let's go for a meg size stack if she's in the video and 25 games if she's not. 25 games is going to be my end of year purge. That's a minimum number. I am guaranteeing it right now, unless of course I change my mind, in which case I'm not guaranteeing it at all. I should really cut this part of the video. In any case, until next time, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. These are the things that are leaving my collection this month: a smattering of games I reviewed, a smattering of games from my permanent collection, a smattering of games from my unplayed games. Those are always the ones I feel the hard. I feel the worst about those. Like I feel like I really. I don't know. I just I, sometimes you get games and and times change and things move on and I've gotten better. I have gotten better at not getting as many new games, but not that much better, just marginally so. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video and as always, I hope you have a good one.